But, you know, at RT, we had Chris Hedges, we had Lee Camp, we had uh, Abby Martin. Mm -hmm. You know, these are all similar ilk. Yes. And and I'm on there, St Max and Stacey are on there, you know, and we're always chatting and talking. Like, we're all kind of in the same yeah. bailiwick, you know, um, and uh, which is also ironic because the, the, the network was referred to often as being a right wing network and yet that, those, are, it, those people are so left it's not it wasn't <laughs> it's not a right way you know, these are lefties clearly these are lefties because um you know the lefties in, in the united states you know they have a very bad media time of it you know because like air america was a disaster yep and then uh chank euchre is i i, I can't always oh. I'm, i apologize i'm really bad with names but i believe this is the correct pronunciation thank you Jank euchre and right, and then Jimmy Dore, of course, was over there. Then he split off and went his own thing. Mm -hmm. MSNBC is supposed to be like more on the other side of the aisle, you know. But they they can't really articulate much useful, anything useful. Um, that um, and this is a big problem that the left has. Very big. right is that they 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 refuse to want to engage constructively in. In, in a realistic manner because they're all crooks and not, well, I mean, I'm sorry. I, I just said that, but like a Nancy Pelosi, I mean, she's, she's, she's a crook. crook. She's, she's a crook, crook right? She's I mean, so crook. she likes to position herself as someone on the left, you know, more of a left wing person. Right. Am I, do I, am I wrong in saying that? Yeah. She, I mean, I laugh cause it's, it's, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing. That's what my, the joke, the democratic party calls themselves the left, Yeah, but they're the left of what? I yeah. mean, they're, 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 they're corporate right wing, pro war, pro banking, but they have it there. I just call them Goldman Sachs with a rainbow flag. That's all they have. They're just right. Okay. So where's the, where's the, re, where is like the real left? There needs to be a left. I wish there was a left. There isn't one. I mean, when George Galloway did his um, testimony in front of Congress, that was a guy from the left who cleaned up, who made everyone like, he just like, I mean, imagine if America had like 50 George Galloway's who are like actually of the left, you know, and, and you'd have a great, you'd have a great dynamism going on there. This is the, this is the thing. And it's the thing we all talk about. I mean, I'm very good friends with Lee camp and I know Abby and I've had Chris Hedges on my show and in other conversations I've had with people like, you know, Ron Placone or whatever, we all are like the act, the true left, we have no home. We are completely politically homeless because, and that's why RT was this last bastion of like the left, the real left criticizing the Democrats and the Republicans and the whole system and calling and, and basically showing how, but that's not allowed in America. Mm -mm. You're only allowed to be a fake. Look, I, my YouTube channel never would have got demonetized if I just sat and did said everything. Well, Trump's bad and blamed everything on Trump and the Republicans right. and just said, oh, you know, Biden's not perfect. If I did that, I would have never been touched. If you pick one of the dumb teams yeah. and say the other team's bad, then you don't get censored. But if you're the real left, yeah. like all those people, like everybody loved Chris Hedges when he was calling out Bush lying mm -hmm. about weapons of mass destruction. Mm -hmm. But then when he started calling out Obama for dropping more bombs than Bush, then it's like, nope, right. quiet. Yeah, like I've always felt that I, I, I identify mostly as right of center, but I would always like be sympathetic to the folks on the left. And I would try to feed them these ideas, the very subversive ideas, like Karma Bank is subversive. It's a subversive idea that the left can use to rug pull the right, the rug pull. Another one was crash JP Morgan by silver, which was a campaign that I did, you know, when, when JP Morgan ended up buying Bear Stearns and Bear Stearns had this enormous position in silver where they were actually short silver and they were what's called naked short silver uh, on a lot of positions. And that if they were exposed suddenly in a way that they didn't probably anticipate is that if the price of silver went up a lot, then they would they would go bankrupt because they couldn't cover mm -hmm. this position. So I and the price was fifteen dollars an ounce. So we started crash J.P. Morgan by silver. We got the price up to fifty, and um, they were had an existential problem at uh, J.P. Morgan where they were were facing bankruptcy because of this incredible problem with the silver short position. So of course, they lobbied D.C. to expand the amount of contracts that they could sell short and naked sell short. They gave them an infinite checkbook to just sell an infinite number of 
sober futures contracts that don't exist. You can counterfeit a sale order in the futures market to bang the price down. That's a naked short sale. And it's legal. It's, it's not like, it's not, it's not legal. It's, it's illegal. But the way that they get around it is that in order to avoid having to pay any penalties for this, they are very lax in what's called reconciliation of, of trading. So all the shorts and longs have to be reconciled at the end of the day mm -hmm. to make sure that nobody sold something that didn't exist. But the way to avoid having the problem of reconciliation is they defer the reconciliation date out infinitely. So there is no reconciliation that there's no, no one ever says and the regulator never actually sees whether or not there are contracts that have been sold that don't exist. So they can never say officially that this person sold counterfeit futures contracts because they've never done the accounting. They've never done the audit because by on purpose, because they're corrupt, because they're captured, captured regulators. So they, they don't do that. And there was a company called um, Overstock run by a guy named Patrick Byrne, whose stock was attacked by short sellers. And he took the SEC to court and they had this protracted legal um, action to try to, and it was all around something called show, CHO with a number, which is the actual regulation nomenclature for what should be the reconciliation. And um, this went on for a long time. He, he ultimately lost that battle and it continues to this day. And uh, we got the price up to 50 bucks on silver. And, um, and, and then um, it, it, they, of course, it, you can take physical delivery of silver. That's what made it key because usually all these futures contracts, they sell for cash, right? Mm -hmm. And, but if you remove the physical silver from the market, then you are making it impossible for them to um, float even bogus contracts. So we, so the idea was just to buy silver. If everybody in the world bought five ounces of silver, you could kill JP Morgan dead, essentially. So I did the math on this. It was something like just everyone buy five ounces and, and Jamie Dimon's out of a job. And, you know, we had all these videos of people stacking silver, you know, like 500 coins, a thousand coins, like we're going to fuck Jamie Dimon. And um, this went on for six months. The, Financial Times did a story about it. Like, there's some activist out there. He's trying to kill J.P. Morgan. <laughs> and we don't think it's going to work. But, you know, if you look at my Wikipedia page, they cover it and they say something like, uh, you know, Max Kaiser. And then the, the U.K. press said it was a fantastical scheme. That, you know, So, like, they were trying to talk their way out of this. And um, But that was a subversive campaign for me, the capitalist, subversively giving the lefties a way to rug pull. Like they, they assume that they can't assault this edifice called capitalism, it's impenetrable. But you know what? It's a house of cards that is easily taken down with a few simple tricks. Easily. <laughs> That's the thing, I love that. That's such a great piece of activism. And what I was thinking of when you were saying this, which is a great story is, and I, I made such a point of this to my audience when the GameStop thing happened. I go, that was a bunch of, activists on on basic gamers that didn't want to see their favorite store get shut down from their yep. childhood yep. on reddit and they they stuck it to them and then everybody complained because they're like the, the the you know the billionaires or whatever like you guys game the system the way we do you can't do that and it was like i go and i would the point i would kept making to my audience i go look at how powerful that activism was yep. and nobody got tear gassed. Nobody nope. got beat up or shot with rubber bullets or thrown in jail or beaten up or any of the things that happen in street activism yep. where, when they, the, the state is going to send riot cops. That's going to happen. And I was like, see, Bitcoin is like a GameStop it thing is exactly. every day. Exactly right. So the GameStop was a short squeeze, which is exactly like crash JP Morgan buy silver. It's you're, you're squeezing the shorts exactly in the same way they discovered that something like 400 percent of the float of the stock had been sold counterfeited and sold that didn't exist and um it it, it unleashed this bet wall street or wall street bets character on social media and that was huge for a while and that's exactly correct 